Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, uh, we will uh, uh, find or determine the ABCD parameters of a transmission line. So once you open MATLAB, so you will have this uh, uh, view. So here we have the current folder window, here we have the details window, here we have the editor window, and here we have the command window, and here we have the workspace window. So uh, uh, when you are at home, so select uh, simulant. So once you click simulant, you will have this uh, page open. So we need to create a, a, a new model. So we select a blank model. Once we select a blank model, so we will have this area where we will work. Again, you can go through the library in order to uh, collect the components that we will use in this uh, experiment or in this model. So uh, in Simulink, you go down to Simscape and uh, in Simscape, you double click, then you choose Simscape Electrical then you go down to specialized power systems and in specialized power systems uh, you can collect uh, whatever you want i want to collect uh, so, uh, 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 click on sources and i will select the ac voltage source uh, uh, as an input voltage source uh, to our experiment of course you can go to the library once again to collect other values uh, or other components or uh, simply you can double click anywhere here. So now I want to have uh, a pi uh, section for the line. So I will type pi section line. This is a pi section line, as you see. And uh, let me a little bit make it like here, like this. So this is pi section line. So this is a transmission line represented by its pi equivalent. And as you know, by equivalent, uh, uh, in the pi equivalent circuit, we have lambda, RL uh, uh, parameters, series parameters, and uh, shunt capacitance or capacitive admittance. And that is uh, split into two parts, so one part at the sending end and the other part at the receiving end. I need uh, current measurement devices. So I need two of them. So current measurement devices, and I need voltage measurement device so voltage measurement device so let me type measurement it's easier to find it so here is a voltage measurement device i need the displays so uh, and i need a, a power gui and i need as well a ground okay so these are uh, the main components that we need in order to build this system. So, and I want also a, a RLC a series branch. So this is RLC branch, okay. So here will be the voltage source that will energize uh, the system. And uh, I will connect it in a series with the uh, RLC branch and this RLC branch, I will double click, I will select the type to be a resistance and it has a value of one ohm, that's fine. So I will click apply and then okay. And then I will connect this source uh, by this uh, uh, resistance. And then I'm connecting the ground to the other side of the source. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the power supply for this uh, transmission line. So I want to measure the sending end current and sending end voltage. So in order to measure the sending end current, I need to connect uh, the current uh, measurement device. And then I will connect it uh, with the, uh, 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 the transmission line. And I need a display in order to see the value of that uh, current. Also, I want to measure the voltage across uh, the, at the sending end so the voltage at the sending end so it will be uh, the voltage measured between the input of the transmission line and uh, with the uh, ground so i will take this ground i will copy it so again i will select the ground and i will do copy and then i will paste the ground somewhere here and uh, i will see that uh, it is uh, an here okay so this will be the ground this will be the ground 
So as you see, I'm measuring the voltage between the input, the line and the ground. So this will be the sending in the voltage, sending in voltage. Okay, because uh, here the source is grounded, you can connect directly between the source and the uh, voltage source and avoid this ground, but uh, it's up to you. Okay, and here we have the power uh, GUI clock we need to double click on the power GUI clock. We need to uh, select the phaser and uh, 60 Hertz and then apply okay. And uh, now this problem will be solved in phaser. So I need to double click on the current source and I will select the magnitude and angle. So I will have the current in cooler form. Okay, I need uh, another display in order to show the voltage. So here will be the voltage and the voltage also should be shown to be uh, uh, as a, a magnet, uh, as a complex number in polar form. So now I'm done with the sending end and here we have the source. And now I want to do the same thing for the receiving end. So for the receiving end, I need also a, a current measurement device. So I will copy uh, these uh, guys and I will paste them here. So we have uh, them connected to the transmission line at the output of the transmission line, which is uh, the uh, receiving, to measure the receiving end current. Okay. And now I want to have also the voltage to be measured at the receiving end. So I will select uh, all these uh, components and uh, I will copy them and then I will paste them somewhere and uh, here they are so they will be uh, let me have them at the same uh, uh, level here so it will be connected through the current source and uh, measured to the ground okay so this is the uh, voltage at the receiving end. Okay, so this is the voltage at the receiving end. Okay, and this is the voltage at the sending end. So let me label all these displays. So this will be voltage at the sending end, comma, volts. And this will be the voltage at the receiving end. So VR comma volts and this will be the current so this will be i r comma ampere and this will be the current at the sending end so it will be i s comma ampere okay so let me click here in order to maximize the circuit so as, uh, as we see that we have this uh, bisection line and here the sending end current, the receiving end current and the receiving end voltage and the uh, sending end voltage. Okay, and as you see here, the circuit is open circuited because uh, the current cannot flow through the voltage measurement device because the internal impedance of the voltage measurement device is uh, very high, is very high. So let me have this a little bit down here in order to use uh, uh, the uh, circuit, uh, uh, to use the space. And now I want to have uh, some equations written here. Okay, as you see that the two part equations, so the voltage at the sending end is equal to A times the voltage at the receiving end plus uh, B, which is the second parameter multiplied by the current at the receiving end. So this is the first equation that we have for uh, the uh, transmission line or uh, when represented as a two port network, as a two port network. Okay, now for the other equation, as you know that the other equation is related to the current at the sending end and the current at the sending end will be equal to C times the voltage at the receiving end and the plus D times that current at the receiving end. 
So these are the two equations that uh, uh, relates the uh, voltage and the current at the sending end with the voltage and the current at the receiving end through the ABCD parameters or through the transmission parameters. So these parameters are uh, A, B, C, D, and uh, they are uh, 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 listed as follows. So now how we can define these parameters? So how we can find A, how we can find B and C and D? So we perform actually two experiments. So the first experiment that we need to perform is an open circuit per, uh, experiment. So this is an open circuit experiment. So in open circuit experiment, uh, the current in the receiving end will be equal to zero because the receiving end is uh, open circuited. So the current will be equal to zero. So once the current is equal to zero, we see the following. So if I are equal to zero, so from the first equation, I can find A as uh, the ratio of V sending end over V receiving end. So I can find A as uh, the ratio of V sending end over V receiving end. And from the second equation, when IR is equal to zero because the circuit is all, the transmission line is open circuited. So I can find the parameter C as I sending end over V receiving end. So C will be equal to I sending end divided by uh, V receiving end, V receiving end. So this, uh, uh, these two parameters can be found from the open circuit test. So you excite the uh, uh, sending end uh, uh, of the transmission line while you will keep uh, the secondary side open circuited. And as you see, it is open circuited because the current cannot flow through the voltage measurement device because uh, it has a high internal impedance. The second experiment will be the short circuit experiment. The short circuit experiment. So in the short circuit experiment, we short circuit the output port of the two port network, which is uh, the receiving end in our case here. So it will be, and in this case, V at the receiving end will be equal to zero. And uh, why is that? Because it is short circuited. As you know, if you have a short circuit, so the voltage across uh, the two points uh, which are short circuited will be equal to zero. So uh, having uh, this into account, so if VR is equal to zero, so I can find V from the first equation as Vs uh, divided by IR. So I can find V from the first equation as uh, V sending end divided by I receiving end. And I can find the last parameter, which is D, as uh, the ratio of, uh, let's have a look here, uh, VR is equal to zero. So this term is equal to zero, then D will be the ratio of I sending end over I receiving end. So I sending end over I receiving end. So these are the four parameters, A, B, C, D parameters, and we can find them having uh, uh, the, the two experiments done. So now I have this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, equations, and uh, let me have them here. And uh, now I will maximize the, uh, uh, let's say, the screen, and uh, I will make the stop time equal to uh, only one second. And uh, let's have a look, last look, before we run the circuit to make sure that everything uh, looks fine. Okay, for me, it uh, looks fine. So let me run the circuit. So here we have the circuit uh, running. And uh, we see that here in these displays, we have two numbers because we have this magnitude and this is the angle. And also in this display, we have two numbers, magnitude and angle. And in this display, we have two numbers, magnitude and angle. And in this display as well, we have uh, the magnitude and the angle. Okay. So what we see, we see that the voltage at the sending end is equal to 100 uh, into this angle volts. And we see that the voltage at the receiving end is equal to 100.9 into this angle volts. 
we see that the receiving end current is equal to zero because this is one times 10 to the power of negative 22, which is practically zero because the current that is flowing through this circuit will be minimum because we have a high internal impedance of the voltage measurement device. We see we have that we have a sending end current which is equal to 0 0.04 into angle almost 90 degrees. So the question here, why we don't have a current at the receiving end while we have a current at the sending end? And the answer is uh, uh, obvious that this current is a charging current. This current that flows through the capacitor of the transmission line and goes uh, uh, through ground back to the source and we see that uh, uh, the angle is 90 degrees, so the current is leading, and since the angle is 90 degrees, so the current is uh, almost a purely capacitive current, purely capacitive current. Okay, so what we have here, we have three values to write down. So we have the uh, sending end voltage, sending end uh, current, and we have the receiving end voltage, so if you divide the sending end current by the receiving end voltage, you will have C. And in order to have A, you need to divide the sending end voltage by the receiving end voltage, it will be A. Uh, please uh, note that A has no, no dimensions, uh, no uh, unit of measurement, so it is a dimensionless, while uh, C is an admittance because we are dividing the ascending end current by the receiving end voltage. And also note that all these ABCD parameters are complex numbers, are complex numbers. So having these uh, numbers uh, written down, ascending end current, ascending end voltage, and receiving end voltage, you can find A and C parameters. Okay. So now let's uh, do the other part of this experiment, which is a short circuit. So in order to do a short circuit, so I will uh, do the following. So I will delete this line and uh, now I will connect this line to the ground. So I will make a short circuit, okay? And at the same time, I will take measure the voltage, although I know that the voltage across the short circuit will be zero, but in order uh, to make the circuit uh, complete. Now I will run the circuit again and uh, what I see, the first thing, that I can notice that the voltage uh, the, at the receiving end is equal to zero because I have a short circuit at the receiving end. The second thing that I see that we have a sending end current and we have a receiving end current and the sending end current now is lagging current and we see that the angle is negative 86 degrees and it is almost uh, the same angle for the receiving end. So now the resistive inductive, uh, uh, let's say part of the pi uh, 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 section line uh, is the dominant, which is the series impedance. So this is what we see that the current uh, is lagging and it doesn't lag by 90 degrees because we, have, we still have resistor in the uh, uh, equivalent circuit of the transmission line. We still have some capacitor also that compensates the uh, reactive component of the uh, current or the capacitive component of the current. So we see here we have the voltage at the sending end, which is uh, 99.86 into uh, 1.6 uh, uh, degrees uh, volts. So from the short circuit test, we can do the following. So we know that VR is equal to zero and we see that is equal to zero. Then we can find B and B will be equal to V sending end over I receiving end. So here we have V sending end, and here we have I receiving end, so we can calculate B, which is actually an impedance, uh, and uh, it will have uh, ohms as a unit of measurement because we are dividing the voltage by the current. And we can find D, and D should be uh, found from the second equation, so we have here VR is equal to zero. So we can find B as uh, I sending end over I receiving end. So D is equal to I sending end over I receiving end. Again, for B, because we have VR equal to zero, then B will be equal to V sending end over I receiving end as it is written here. Okay, so these uh, using these two experiments, 
you can define the four uh, parameters, A, B, C, D parameters of the transmission line. And after you define them, you can verify that uh, if you multiply A by uh, D uh, minus uh, uh, C times B, it should be equal to one. So you can verify that. And you can verify that A is equal to D. A is equal to D. So A parameter for the medium length transmission line represented by its phi equivalent is equal uh, to uh, D. Now, after we have uh, experimentally uh, determined all the ABCD parameters, we can also compute these parameters using the parameters of the transmission line. So let me copy these uh, parameters uh, values and let me go back to our model. And here I will paste uh, the uh, equations that I copied there. And uh, let me take them here somewhere closer to our formulas so here okay and uh, as you see here as you see here according to the uh, theory of the uh, abcd parameters of the transmission line so a is calculated as one plus uh, the impedance of the transmission line times uh, the admittance of the transmission line divided by two b the parameters equal to the transmission line series impedance and C is equal to the admittance multiplied by one plus uh, the impedance multiplied by the admittance divided by four. And D is equal to A, which is one plus uh, Z times Y over two. Where Z is the uh, impedance, series impedance of the transmission line for the entire length of the line. And Y is the shunt admittance of the transmission line for the entire length of the transmission line. So now we can calculate these parameters using these formulas and compare them with those that we found through experiment. Okay, so how I can calculate them, how, uh, where to get Z and Y, and uh, uh, in order to calculate these ABCD parameters. So what you need to do is to double click on the pi section line. So if I double click on the pi section line, I will see here that the number of phases is one because I'm solving this problem as a pair phase uh, uh, representation of the three phase system. Number of pi sections here is also one pi section and the length uh, also the parameters are lump and the length of the transmission line is 100 kilometer which is more than 80 kilometers then this transmission line falls within the medium length transmission line category. We have a frequency of 60 Hertz, which should match the frequency of the source, as you see here. So it matches, the frequency matches, and matches also the power uh, GUI. So, and here are the parameters. So this is the resistance given in ohms per kilometer. This is the inductance given in Henry per kilometer. And this is the capacitance given in Farad per kilometer. So what you need to, to do in order to find, for example, uh, the impedance. So you need to have this resistance multiplied by the entire length by 100. So this will be the real part of the impedance Z. And for the uh, uh, imaginary part, you need to multiply the inductance by omega, which is uh, two pi the frequency. So multiply it by two and pi and the frequency, which is 60 Hertz and then multiply it by the length of the transmission line, which is 100 kilometers. So this will be the inductive uh, reactance, which is the imaginary part of the impedance. So you calculate the impedance and you can compare it with this uh, B. And uh, if, you, uh, uh, if we did everything correctly, it should uh, match, it should match. For the admittance, we know that the admittance is equal to J omega C. So here we have C, so we need to multiply it by omega, which is two pi F. And here we have F the frequency. And of course, we need to multiply it by the length of the uh, transmission line, the length of the transmission line. So this will be Y, this will be Y. We don't have conductance. Conductance is ignored uh, for all uh, uh, transmission lines uh, categories, the short transmission line, the medium length transmission line, and the uh, longer transmission line. 
So this is the short circuit uh, uh, from which we can uh, find these parameters. And earlier we had the open circuit where we can find these parameters. Now we can calculate these parameters using the given parameters in the pi section line model and compare them with the uh, parameters here and see whether everything is uh, uh, correctly done or not. And of course, we can always verify that A multiplied by B minus C multiplied by B will be equal to one. We also can verify that A is equal to D, A is equal to D. Uh, 